we went through chapter five last last time, and and one of the things we saw, and and I I did an intelligence check on Kyler before you guys got in here, and I said. Read chapter 5, verse 13, and tell me what you think, right? And that's the one, chapter 5, verse 13, is where Solomon raised up labor force out of all of Israel uh, over there. And and Kyler said, oh, he's using slave labor to build the temple. Like, like over there, and I went, you passed this time, Kyler. You, uh, you, passed, you passed this time. But that's kind of what was last time. We see that there's this guy... Uh, a Hiram that he's been working with is bringing all this stuff. They're bringing all these cedars from Lebanon and all this stuff, and and using slave labor, which is a little troublesome. But he didn't treat them like the Egyptians treated. No, it doesn't seem. It didn't say that he mistreated them. Yeah. Yeah. So it says it doesn't say three different months of people. But but he didn't. Yeah. Which, you know, that was something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's a, you are looking for the silver law. You give them So, so that. <laughs> so, so that's so like that's just one of those things. That as we look at this, and you know, and we we had all those numbers afterwards, and there's a lot of a lot of good numbers in that. So it's, and I think we talked about. I didn't watch last last week's video at all, but. I think one of the things we talked about is that it, God is working in the midst of the mess of this whole whole thing. You know, that's I think we talked about like God didn't necessarily say that He wanted the temple being built. We're just getting it's getting built now, and um, and and kind of using slave labor. And we're going to continue kind of going into that journey about what all all this means. But um, so so we will talk about this through. There's a lot of um yeah there's a, just a lot of information coming forward so these may not be the most exciting chapters that we we'll read but they'll have lots of information so let's get going on that and you guys on zoom please tell me if for whatever reason uh the echo does not go away oh hold on before i do that I gotta get it on the right the right <laughs> The right, the right thing. I heard that, Kyler. <laughs> I like that. Oh. Kyler's over here sighing. I would never. And it came to pass, in the 480th year after the children of Israel had come out of the land of Egypt, in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel, in the month of Ziv, which is the second month, that he began to build the house of the Lord. Now the house which King Solomon built for the Lord, its length, was sixty cubits, its width twenty, and its height thirty cubits. The vestibule in front of the sanctuary of the house was twenty cubits long across the width of the house, and the width of the vestibule extended ten cubits from the front of the house. And he made for the house windows with beveled frames. Against the wall of the temple he built chambers all around against the walls of the temple all around the sanctuary and the inner sanctuary. Thus he made side chambers all around it. The lowest chamber was five cubits wide, the middle was six cubits wide, and the third was seven cubits wide. For he made narrow ledges around the outside of the temple, so that the support beams would not be fastened into the walls of the temple. And the temple, when it was being built, was built with stone finished at the quarry, so that no hammer or chisel or any iron tool was heard in the temple while it was being built. The doorway for the middle story was on the right side of the temple. They went up by stairs to the middle story, and from the middle to the third. So he built the temple and finished it, and he paneled the temple with beams and boards of cedar, and he built side chambers against the entire temple, each five cubits high. They were attached to the temple with cedar beams. Then the word of the Lord came to Solomon. Concerning this temple which you are building, if you walk in my statutes, execute my judgments, keep all my commandments, and walk in them, then I will perform my word with you 
which I spoke to your father David. And I will dwell among the children of Israel, and will not forsake my people Israel. So Solomon built the temple and finished it. And he built the inside walls of the temple with cedar boards. From the floor of the temple to the ceiling, he paneled the inside with wood, and he covered the floor of the temple with planks of cypress. Then he built the twenty-cubit room at the rear of the temple, from floor to ceiling, with cedar boards. He built it inside as the inner sanctuary, as the most holy place. And in front of it, the temple sanctuary was forty cubits long. The inside of the temple was cedar, carved with ornamental buds and open flowers. All was cedar. There was no stone to be seen. And he prepared the inner sanctuary inside the temple to set the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord there. The inner sanctuary was twenty cubits long, twenty cubits wide, and twenty cubits high. He overlaid it with pure gold, and overlaid the altar of cedar. So Solomon overlaid the inside of the temple with pure gold. He stretched gold chains across the front of the inner sanctuary, and overlaid it with gold. The whole temple he overlaid with gold, until he had finished all the temple. Also, he overlaid with gold the entire altar that was by the inner sanctuary. Inside the inner sanctuary, he made two cherubim of olive wood, each ten cubits high. One wing of the cherub was five cubits, and the other wing of the cherub five cubits. Ten cubits from the tip of one wing to the tip of the other. And the other cherub was ten cubits. Both cherubim were of the same size and shape. The height of one cherub was ten cubits, and so was the other cherub. Then he set the cherubim inside the inner room, and they stretched out the wings of the cherubim, so that the wing of the one touched one wall, and the wing of the other cherub touched the other wall. And their wings touched each other in the middle of the room. Also he overlaid the cherubim with gold. Then he carved all the walls of the temple all around, both the inner and outer sanctuaries, with carved figures of cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers. And the floor of the temple he overlaid with gold, both the inner and outer sanctuaries. For the entrance of the inner sanctuary he made doors of olive wood. The lintel and doorposts were one-fifth of the wall. The two doors were of olive wood and he carved on them figures of cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers, and overlaid them with gold, and he spread gold on the cherubim and on the palm trees. So for the door of the sanctuary he also made doorposts of olive wood, one-fourth of the wall, and the two doors were of cypress wood. Two panels comprised one folding door, and two panels comprised the other folding door. Then he carved cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers on them, and overlaid them with gold, applied evenly on the carved work. And he built the inner court with three rows of hewn stone and a row of cedar beads. In the fourth year, the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid in the month of Ziv. And in the eleventh year, in the month of Bull, which is the eighth month, the house was finished in all its details and according to all its plans. So he was seven years in building it. Hmm. Okay. Seven, I guess. That's a good number there. It's a good number. Okay. So what stood out to you? Like there's there's a lot of things that stood out to me in this. There's a, like this. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to talk too much. Like that. <laughs> How many feet is a cubit? How many feet is a cubit? A cubit is is um is it eight feet eight feet? elbow to the tips of fingers. So it's it's different for everybody, but it's like a foot and a half. Yeah. So that that's that's a cubit. So they they like a man would build a house for himself, and he could use cubits, and the house would be perfectly sized for himself. <laughs> 
So that's, but that, you know, you think that, that's an easy standing. Uh, but that's kind of what, what a cubit, I imagine it had gone, you know, kind of like our foot. Mm-hmm. I, I imagine that that, that it had become a standard, a, a standard thing, but about a foot and a half. I would assume other than you two, you would remember Bill Cosby's bit about Noah, in which the Lord tells him to build an ark. Yeah. He uses the term cubits. Yeah. And Noah has no clue what he's talking yeah. about. <laughs> the cute. Cubits. Uh, so, like, that's yeah. I, I don't know, like, like that. <laughs> I don't know that bit. I don't know a lot of Cosby bits. Cosby, Co- Cosby with my generation had some issues. <laughs> <laughs> like that, that's the, my hometown, famous. Oh, did he? That's where his trial was. Oh, I think she's just running on The pictures of my courthouse and the, <laughs> the uh, yeah, <laughs> that's. They, uh, um, I, I, I get it. There's a funny joke I want to make, but it has nothing to do with this. Um, <laughs> so the one thing I want to point out before we, we point out other things is um, the very first verse it came to pass after 480th year after the children of Israel come out of the land of Egypt. Why is that interesting? Why is that amount of years interesting? Forties, uh, he's got a lot of forties in it. From, it yeah, yeah, yeah there's a lot of forties. Well, uh, just the month of Zev, that was what the month, the tone that was in there. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, it yeah, could be. Like if things are getting mentioned here, so that's that's it. I didn't know that. Yeah, if you look back, you know. Yeah. So that's the the month of atonement. So four hundred and eighty is um is twelve forties. Oh, okay. <laughs> so twelve times forty. Yeah, <laughs> is 12, 12 times 40 is um, is 480, which I think, you know, so you think about wandering around the wilderness, 40 years, 12 tribes of Israel, you know, it's kind of like, you know, in, and I think it's, it's like a, almost like a culmination of like, they've been wandering around all this, all this time. And this is, and this is being built now. It's almost like they're coming out of uh, the, the, the coming out of the wilderness kind of completely. I, I don't know. I, that, it may not be that, but that is curious that those two numbers multiplied together are 480. Um, and so that's, but yeah, 12, it's, it's 1240s. You know, like that's, and so, so that's, that's, that's good. Um, the Ziv is fascinating. Like that month where atonement happens. That's, that's really good. What, what else, what else kind of stood out to you? And, and roll, roll the gold. Roll the gold? Yeah. I was it for God or was it for Solomon? It's yes. So so let's say yes. <laughs> so so the the to kind of go with that, like you can tell that there is a lot of care being put into this bill. Like there's there's a lot like in and you can tell there's a lot of care because there's a lot written about it. You know, we're we're talking like the first the first question after this is how long is a cubit? You know, for us, like like talking about that, it's it, it's very it's very uh, important type type of type of thing, and and also other things were very important, like no hammer or chisel or anything like that was used on site. You know, they they like. Which leads to the the joke of like it was you know it's like a manufactured home like they're just bringing it but it's but you know it, it's they're 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 doing they're doing things off site you know to and I think it's bringing more honor to the site that that it, that it's in you know they're they're doing all that so I'll, I'll ask Lee I'll ask you this question so the stuff that they're covering in gold were often images of a certain type of thing. What, what were those images, a certain type of thing out? Cherub. Of what? The cherub. Cher- cherub, but also a lot of trees. Oh yeah. Well that's, but that's, that's the garden motif. Yeah. 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 So trees, uh, flowers, angels, I, all all of those things, and well, it's not putting gold on the floor. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that book about us in cages. <laughs> but it's it's uh it, and also I think it's interesting that 
it, everything's being built so it's stone like the substructure is stone and then it's all wood and then they're covering that wood with gold mm-hmm. um and and as i was reading this you know and it really was bringing me back to the ideas of the garden of eden that that all this wood stuff you know it's just it's bringing all this reminiscent reminiscent back to the garden all these trees and flowers and just kind of abundance and and, and that's why that all the angels and cherubim you know all that stuff are are in there as well because in in the hebrew uh, hebrew whatever it's called theology there we go theology is that the holy of holies is is like it's bringing back the garden of Eden. Yeah. I perhaps his uh, word that was too harsh. Garish. Garish. Yeah. Could Solomon do anything but what he did? Now, what do you mean by that? That's that's an interesting fr- phrase. But what do you mean by that? Again, Nikki, our, our present day concern about all that gold. Yeah. Well, in his day. What is his mission? He is building. He's building the temple to God, Lord God. Yes. And what is the most precious thing he can offer? Gold. Yeah. Now, uh, by our standards, it gets excessive rather yeah. than garish. But again, I ask the question rhetorically: Could he do anything else in fulfilling this this tribute to the Lord? Yeah. Yeah. And and that's all out. Yeah, all all out. And that and you still see that in play today um what one of <laughs> uh if you're ever near st louis you should go to the st louis basilica so uh, you yeah, know they're that big regional catholic church there it's incredible it's the most mo- mosaics in one place in the world uh and it's sitting in st louis <laughs> like that that's so I spent a lot of time in St. Louis. It's it's just fine, right? Like, uh, but but it's kind of surprising that it's there. But I remember I was in there with my grandmother, and we walked in, and I was like, "Oh my goodness!" And she and she got, I I've not seen my grandmother that angry in a lot of time. She's like, "Do you realize the amount of people we could feed?" Da, 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 you know, just just like she she was that she was that 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 random show. There's this there there's this um, tension. There's this tension of the opulence where where I think we're we're mixed talking about with you got to build it like that you're building this for God so you're putting all the gold all the things on it and and then and, but we also have our sensibilities where it's like well hey like you know maybe and this needs to be more about the people and, and I kind of I. Me personally, I give them a little pass with all the gold in this one because we have so many details as to why it's built because or how it's built. Like, like I think my favorite example is they didn't have any chisels or anything like that on site. You know, that, that would have been expensive like gold to do something like that, to haul completed pieces of stone in. You know, and, and that's that would have been expensive, and so that that is that's something I kind of give it a give it a pass because it's really going going uh, going all out. But there there could be some where it, it's like this is a little concerning, but it doesn't have too much of that to me in the text. Yeah, one interesting thing I noted from the Jewish Bible is that they never mentioned it as the temple. Oh, it's only mentioned as the house, the house. So that that's interesting. So there, so that's being. How did the new the NIV render that or the ESV? Was temple. it called the temple? Oh, yeah. So like that's uh, temple. The, 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 that's interesting that they're that they're rendering that as the house, yeah. because that that goes back to that that King David language when when God says, "I will establish my house." And and so that that's that's really interesting that they're they're rendering out is that they're they they are that's translation happening in front of our eyes you know <laughs> like, like that's uh, of of understanding and and all, all of that so how so little other than the house yeah yeah 
house, the house, the house. The house, the house, the house. So, so uh, the other thing I thought was interesting was verse 11 through 13. And it says, Then the word of the Lord came to Solomon, saying, Concerning this temple which you are building, if you walk in my statutes, execute my judgments, keep all my commandments, walk in them, um, I will perform my word with you, which I spoke to your father David. So again, we're going back to 2 Samuel chapter 7. And I will dwell among the children of Israel and will not forsake my people Israel. I have a note written there from a previous Bible study um, that I said, this sounds like foreshadowing. Okay. We, we, like that's this sound. This sounds like foreshadowing to me. No, no, you mean like, like, like that. That's like it, it's you know we know what's coming. We know what's coming. Uh, basically, at the end of Kings, the the collapse, the collapse of it all, and um, and I, and I don't know if Mick has been been here to hear this, and Kyler's probably heard this, but my my big thing on on the um oh what's it called when israel's taken over by babylon the captivity. yeah the captivity the babylonian captivity okay. when when my big thing on that is the babylonian captivity and, and all of that is is that israel that they wanted to be like Babylon so bad they want to be big and important and wealthy. They just wanted to be Babylon so bad. And finally, God yeah. kind of relinquished. And it's like, if you want to be them so bad, you can just be them. And 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 it's almost like an overtaking of Babylon as they be- almost become like Babylon. And that becomes a captivity. And I really like that view of it because it seems to jive what the overall narrative of the Old Testament is. And I won't get into all that because we'll talk about that for for a long time, but that it's always this struggle with the power of Egypt, which is a Babylon. You know, it's always a struggle with it with this with this power and like do we do we need to do this or go this go this other direction. And and I still think that's a struggle that we that we still deal with, you know, where it's like do, it, it, and that's the struggle of of mankind. It's like, well, then how much power do I do I take, you know? And and that's and because it's it's a balance. It, it's a balance. You can't. I, I don't think righteousness is all of us just living out in the woods eating berries. Yeah. Now you, now you tell me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's. Have you been trying to do that? You're, you're Where do you keep, think I came from? You're keeping the pants clean. Well, you know, you know, the woods and the berries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's, Master, I've got a question. I've got a question. Yeah. It, yeah. I can't quite comprehend verse six. It's talking about yes. the lowest floor. Lowest floor was five cubits. The middle floor was six cubits. And the third floor was seven cubits. What am I not understanding here? That each floor gets bigger. <laughs> the, the, the lowest chamber was five, five six, and seven. <laughs> um, no, what's that? Not set down. Yeah. Yes, they had uh, an overhang I, on each floor. Yeah, right. yeah. I, you know, you know. So I'm looking at I'm I'm looking at this um, an image of the side rooms right here. And and the way they have this rendered is that the the central body of the temple tapers a little bit on its way up, and that those side rooms would go straight. So and and that it, they're talking about the side rooms there in verse six, right? This one, this one talks about it being the um, lowest story was five cubits wide. The middle one was six cubits wide and the third was seven cubits wide so it seems like they're expanding them yeah yeah they talk about the lowest and the middle and the and the third one they don't say the highest one let's, let's, see, let's see if this works let's see if this works oh man all right so this is an image i don't know if that's sharp or not but in the back of it they have like a cross section of the side rooms and you can see how they render it it's it's kind of coming coming up 
um, it's going to take where you land. Main road. So, so that that could be what's going on. So that's for everyone in the room. Like that's we're saying that big room there is kind of tapering as it's coming up, and the side rooms would have been, which a taper when you walk into that main room would have kind of made sense. It would have given like this infinity look where it made it look taller. You know, it's kind of like kind of like when you go to Disney World that Cinderella's castle looks a lot bigger than it is because they're tapering it you know like that that's so it would have given like kind of an infinity look as you walked in but about last part of verse six last part of verse six foundation under these rooms yeah okay well it's if he made offset ledges around the outside so, of the temple so that nothing would be inserted into the temple wall those must have been a, like a separate scaffold or yeah they like support beams. Yeah. So maybe that's how they got away with making it bigger as they went on. I imagine an architect would really get off on this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's some magic going on here. Right. Yeah. yeah. Architecture. Where she throws some carpenter, so I get a little bit of understanding. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Slide elements. So that's um. So yeah, I I you know I I don't know specifically, but. It kind of sounds like maybe there was a taper going on in there, and the outside walls aren't tapered. Like that's so, but that's a good catch. At. <laughs> like that's it's amazing when you see when you see some of the ruins to think how you know the columns might be oh three feet in diameter, four feet, five feet in diameter, and 30, 40 feet high, perfectly round. You know, how did they get those put together and up? And the same thing with walls. You know, the shot the blocks the blocks of stone are, you know, bigger than cars. And yeah, you know, how in the world they got those stacked up and put together. It's a, yeah. it's amazing. It, it is. It is. He called slave labor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, uh, it it it's amazing how like in, ingenious some of those things. It is amazing how how much knowledge we learn when we don't need that, uh, how much knowledge we lose when we don't need that knowledge anymore. Uh, my favorite example is like when we're looking at stars in the sky, those stars are coming from, you know, hundreds of thousands of light years away, if not much, much more. Right. So that star could explode, be extinguished for whatever reason. Okay. And it would, and it would, and we would lose it. How long, even in our recorded history, like we have it now, would we would it take for someone to go, oh, that star never existed? You guys were looking at it wrong, you know. <laughs> and, and it's just because there's there's it, the way we deal with knowledge is there's nothing like today. And so, like that's so. Uh, was there anything else that kind of stood stood out in in all these things? I thought that um, it was interesting that. After Solomon started building it, God talked to him, and there were no exact descriptions of how to build it from God to Solomon. Yeah, yeah, no, there's not, there's not. It's not like, it's not like the tabernacle. Right. That's that's a good catch. That's a good catch. They're they're, they're doing a lot of things, taking a lot of concern, and all this, and they're really building it very similar to how they would build the tabernacle. Um, they're 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 building it very similar to that, just making it permanent. I again, my pulling back from garishness. If the Lord was speaking to Solomon, was it critical? Oh my! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so that's a yeah, exactly. So, so the one thing I did think was interesting was verse seventeen. In the front of the temple sanctuary was forty cubits long. It's just these these interesting numbers that are in there. That are of importance. Uh, Seven to build it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so it's just, just yeah, the whole building is an ode to everything that's important to Israel, and and you know, and their God is incredibly important. So the whole building is, you know, they took a took a lot of lot of care. Um, also, all those. All those flowers, palm trees, cherubims were everywhere. Like I wrote that as a note. They're just, they're just everywhere. 
And then it all ends up with, it took them seven years to build it, which is a nice, nice round, good number. You know, like that's took them seven years, just like the seven days of creation took them seven years to build. So that's, why that's, that's, did they not use stone for the house? So they use it as like the, the, the basis, like the, um, foundation and the walls but then they covered it with wood and i think they covered it with wood because that was an exotic material then so it was like the best they could get you know we 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 don't view wood that way woods especially in this area of town in this you know in this area of the country wood is wood is the cheap stuff and you want the concrete block you know like that that's that that's kind of how we treat homes around here but you know, wood would have been the expensive stuff there, and so that's that that's so they're building it with that. But they're still covering that wood with gold. <laughs> um, okay. Anything else from that that chapter, Pastor? They didn't want the echo from the stone walls. Oh, <laughs> purely practical, right? Ed, Ed was one of them to help put all of our. All of our sounds. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's preventing hearing loss. Yeah, yeah, preventing hearing loss. That that's funny. All right, let's go on to let's go on to chapter seven. Let's read chapter seven. Here we go. Let's see, share screen. Hit that button. Here we go. But Solomon took thirteen years to build his own house. So he finished all his house. He also built the house of the forest of Lebanon. Its length was 100 cubits, its width 50 cubits, and its height 30 cubits, with four rows of cedar pillars and cedar beams on the pillars. And it was paneled with cedar above the beams that were on 45 pillars, 15 to a row. There were windows with beveled frames in three rows, and window was opposite window in three tiers and all the doorways and doorposts had rectangular frames, and window was opposite window in three tiers. He also made the Hall of Pillars. Its length was 50 cubits, and its width 30 cubits. And in front of them was a portico with pillars, and a canopy was in front of them. Then he made a hall for the throne, the Hall of Judgment, where he might judge and it was paneled with cedar from floor to ceiling. And the house where he dwelt had another court inside the hall, of like workmanship. Solomon also made a house like this hall for Pharaoh's daughter, whom he had taken as wife. All these were of costly stones, cut to size, trimmed with saws inside and out, from the foundation to the eaves, and also on the outside to the great court. The foundation was of costly stones, large stones, some ten cubits and some eight cubits. And above were costly stones hewn to size and cedar wood. The great court was enclosed with three rows of hewn stones and a row of cedar beams. So were the inner court of the house of the Lord and the vestibule of the temple. Now King Solomon sent and brought Huram from Tyre. He was the son of a widow from the tribe of Naphtali, and his father was a man of Tyre, a bronze worker. He was filled with wisdom and understanding and skill in working with all kinds of bronze work. So he came to King Solomon and did all his work, and he cast two pillars of bronze, each one eighteen cubits high, and a line of twelve cubits measured the circumference of each. Then he made two capitals of cast bronze to set on the tops of the pillars. The height of one capital was five cubits, and the height of the other capital was five cubits. He made a lattice network with wreaths of chain work for the capitals which were on top of the pillars, seven chains for one capital and seven for the other capital. So he made the pillars and two rows of pomegranates above the network all around to cover the capitals that were on top. And thus he did for the other capital. 
The capitals, which were on top of the pillars in the hall, were in the shape of lilies, four cubits. The capitals on the two pillars also had pomegranates above, by the convex surface, which was next to the network and there were two hundred such pomegranates in rows on each of the capitals all around. <coughs> then he set up the pillars by the vestibule of the temple. He set up the pillar on the right and called its name Jachin, and he set up the pillar on the left and called its name Boaz. The tops of the pillars were in the shape of lilies. So the work of the pillars was finished. And he made the sea of cast bronze, ten cubits from one brim to the other. It was completely round. Its height was five cubits, and a line of thirty cubits measured its circumference. Below its brim were ornamental buds encircling it all around, ten to a cubit, all the way around the sea. The ornamental buds were cast in two rows when it was cast. It stood on twelve oxen, three looking toward the north, three looking toward the west, three looking toward the south, and three looking toward the east. The sea was set upon them, and all their back parts pointed inward. It was a handbreadth thick, and its brim was shaped like the brim of a cup, like a lily blossom. It contained two thousand baths. He also made ten carts of bronze, Four cubits was the length of each cart, four cubits its width, and three cubits its height. And this was the design of the carts. They had panels, and the panels were between frames. On the panels that were between the frames were lions, oxen, and cherubim, and on the frames was a pedestal on top. Below the lions and oxen were wreaths of plated work. Every cart had four bronze wheels and axles of bronze, and its four feet had supports. Under the laver were supports of cast bronze beside each wreath. Its opening inside the crown at the top was one cubit in diameter, and the opening was round, shaped like a pedestal, one and a half cubits in outside diameter, and also on the opening were engravings, but the panels were square not round. Under the panels were the four wheels, and the axles of the wheels were joined to the cart. The height of a wheel was one and a half cubits. The workmanship of the wheels was like the workmanship of a chariot wheel. Their axle pins, their rims, their spokes, and their hubs were all of cast bronze, and there were four supports at the four corners of each cart. Its supports were part of the cart itself. On the top of the cart, at the height of half a cubit, it was perfectly round. And on the top of the cart, its flanges and its panels were of the same casting. On the plates of its flanges and on its panels, he engraved cherubim, lions and palm trees, wherever there was a clear space on each, with wreaths all around. Thus he made the ten carts. All of them were of the same mold, one measure and one shape. Then he made ten lavers of bronze. Each laver contained forty baths, and each laver was four cubits. On each of the ten carts was a laver. And he put five carts on the right side of the house and five on the left side of the house. He set the sea on the right side of the house toward the southeast. Huram made the lavers and the shovels and the bowls. So Huram finished doing all the work that he was to do for King Solomon for the house of the Lord. The two pillars, the two bowl-shaped capitals that were on top of the two pillars, the two networks covering the two bowl-shaped capitals which were on top of the pillars, four hundred pomegranates for the two networks, two rows of pomegranates for each network to cover the two bowl-shaped capitals that were on top of the pillars, the ten carts and ten lavers on the carts one sea and twelve oxen under the sea, the pots, the shovels, and the bowls. All these articles, which Huram made for King Solomon for the house of the Lord, were of burnished bronze. 
In the plain of Jordan, the king had them cast in clay molds, between Succoth and Zeratan. And Solomon did not weigh all the articles, because there were so many. The weight of the bronze was not determined. Thus Solomon had all the furnishings made for the house of the Lord, the altar of gold and the table of gold, on which was the showbread, the lampstands of pure gold, five on the right side and five on the left, in front of the inner sanctuary, with the flowers and the lamps and the wick trimmers of gold, the basins, the trimmers, the bowls, the ladles, and the censers of pure gold, and the hinges of gold, both for the doors of the inner room, the most holy place, and for the doors of the main hall of the temple. So all the work that King Solomon had done for the house of the Lord was finished. And Solomon brought in the things which his father David had dedicated, the silver and the gold and the furnishings. He put them in the treasuries of the house of the Lord. Okay. All right. So that's that kind of read a lot like reading about people people that had babies. Mm-hmm. and uh, all, all of that but what um what were things that kind of stood out in this in this section it was the golden age beginning <laughs> <laughs> they uh yeah it's never age. Yeah. so so it took seven years to build the, the temple the very next verse i think is kind of interesting 13. took 13 to build to build the palace yeah <laughs> Well, like that, that's I get those. Remember, there there are no chapter distinctions. From the, well, I think those are kind of meant to be read together, and and I think that's kind of uh, some some subtleness to 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 some of the message that we're getting you know, getting here. So it's also four times bigger. It's also four times bigger. Yeah, yeah, it's quite a bit, quite a bit larger. And all, all all those things, yeah. Uh, is this is this time that's building these concurrent or are they six uh it sound, it sounds like they're building them probably at the same time or at least close to the same time so like that's like is that what you're asking yeah 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 I, that's a good question I, I was wondering whether he decided to focus in on the house of the lord care of that, and then move on to his own palace it's you know i i don't know i imagine it could be it could be either one it could be either one, and um, and so I imagine you probably built built the temple first. And uh, what do you think that when they talk about all the things that Hiram made out of the burnished bronze and so forth, would you think that he had a a number of people doing that with for him? I mean, he couldn't have done all that by himself. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think Hiram is probably a lot like uh, Michelangelo. He's got a staff. Yeah, he's got he's got a whole staff with him, and yeah. you know it's kind of like our he's contracting out the labor. You know, he's he's right. doing matter of fact. Yeah, yeah. He was he probably had the ability and and he was able to make the knew how to direct him. Yeah. He had knew how to knew how to direct. Shoot yeah. arrows. You got you have the guy who's bringing you cedar from. That was Hiram, uh, Hiram and Hiram. Is it it's close? It's spelling. I. It's very close. It's very close. But that that's it is too. Which kind of makes me wonder if there's something going along with that name in Hebrew. But I don't really want to. I don't have the knowledge to make that happen because those are very similar names, Hiram and Hiram. So I yeah, that's. Um. All right. What what else kind of stood stood out to you here? I mean, the place is huge. Um, in the King James Version, it said, kept calling it capitals. Were, were the other translations using the same word? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So that's kind of the top of, of his pillars. And and that's, it was, I, I was, again, I get carts were called labors, <laughs> labor stands, labor stands. So the carts, the carts I thought were interesting. Because they spend a lot of time on, on the carts, and 
and yeah. and the why and the reason and I I may have a theory as to why I think the carts are kind of new tech because they compare the carts to chariots yes and so yeah yeah so like you know if you were building something if I built a new house and I used a new a new a new tech to build I'd probably tell you about it yeah, I still kind of do. Like when people come over, I show them the electric car charger. <laughs> this is this is where the magic happens. You know, like that. That's yeah. You know, that's you know. I kind I kind of I kind of do that just just you know to to show show people that stuff. So so it um, you know this could be some of that where these cars. The idea is having having hardened wheels and all all of that was was a, uh, a supreme luxury in that time because they spent a lot of time on those carts yeah yeah when i first read this i read labor stand as a place to wash up yeah yeah uh, we're french okay yeah that's good well they also had the sea too they had that giant basin um now i don't know if this matters at all but i thought it was interesting that they had the bulls or the oxen, yeah, uh, uh, um, holding up the twelve of them holding up the giant sea thing. Um, I this is Chris Escher conjecturing there, but it just I started getting uncomfortable in this stuff because that sounds a lot like golden calves. Yeah, like so, like I, I don't know, I, you know, I I don't know if that's valid or not. Uh, oxen and bulls were a common symbol for fertility back mm -hmm. back in the day. I mean, I mean that's kind of the whole idea of like in the stock market, like the bull bull rallies and all that stuff. Kind of a similar idea, of fertility and abundance. So, again, do we criticize it or we understand it as really like the river? Yes, it's, it's been around. Yeah, they will use it. Uh, yeah, so we have people adopted for this this beautiful temple. Yeah, like that's. Mm -hmm. And that's also like a lot of the notes in here, uh, in this Bible, what, and that's what this Bible is, is like, hey, the, all this stuff was also in this palace. Yeah. All this stuff was in this palace. Yeah, you know, like that. This was everywhere and very common for the day. But um, but I, I think it's interesting when that stuff kind of comes out. Um, any, anything anything else from this? I thought. I even with all the mention of bronze for all the different things that they would use for serving and and such, they made sure to mention that the table for the bread of the presence was gold. Yeah, yeah. No, that's and that's that's that. Yeah, they made sure about that. Got to have amongst all that metal, you got to have the precious metals for for the Lord. You know, <laughs> and. Uh, and so that's no, but this is fascinating. Kind of, kind of looking at all these things. We're not going to go on to the next chapter. It's it, the next two chapters are 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 for each other, and they're also incredibly long. Hmm. <laughs> like that's, and so I just looked at it I'm like, let's see if we can get through the. Uh, no, 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 no. So, um, but. Was was there was there anything else that you want to point out in in this one? Nothing. I didn't really have anything either. It's just it's very opulent, and um, I think the fact that the description of how well it's built, the descriptions match the temple. Which I think is interesting. That's that's just a that that you know you have the the building of the temple, and then you have building of Solomon's other the courts and all that stuff. And it's just it's just very it's very detailed. You you don't you don't see that in other places. Um, you know, that that's Exodus. There's multiple chapters to to the uh, tabernacle and how it's built. And, and, and it's just, it just seems, it's, it seems, yeah. it seems different. And I, and I think we, and at least it's my theory that we see the downfall of Solomon coming up in the, in the next few times we, we get together. 
And so that's, but, uh, but it's all, all kind of fascinating, all kind of fascinating. And, um, if there's nothing else, the, uh, we'll, we'll be back next week. Um, and it'll be, it'll be good times. Everyone watching on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining us.